Hey everybody, Matt here for Imagine Then Make. Well, it's time to make some more scroll saw cuts. This time, we're going to use a spiral blade. So it was several months ago when I renewed my interest in learning how to use the scroll saw better. And so I restarted my education then by watching a bunch of experienced scrollers on YouTube, checking out what kind of saws they were using, what kind of wood they were making their projects out of, what kind of projects they were making, and also trying to understand what kind of blades it seemed most people preferred. And along the way, it seemed like several experienced guys were suggesting that beginners, and I consider myself a beginning scroller, the experienced guys were suggesting that the beginners should maybe stay away from spiral blades, at least at first, saying that spiral blades are a little bit harder to control. So in this video, I want to test that. Are spiral blades harder to control? So the spiral blade I'm going to use is from Olsen. Here's the package. It's a universal number four blade, 36 teeth per inch, 41 thousandths of an inch kerf. Here's a brand new one out of that package. Let me zoom in a little. Hopefully you can see that it is a pinless blade, otherwise known as a flat end blade. And I hope you can see that the blade is made by twisting so that there's teeth all the way around the blade, which is what allows it to cut in any direction. So the pin end blade that I'm going to use is this one. There you can see the pins at each end of the blade. You can see it's got a fair number of teeth per inch, so it's fairly fine. And you can see it's considerably wider than the spiral blade. Here's another look at both blades side by side. Spiral blade on the left the pin and blade on the right, and you can see how much wider the pin and blade is compared to the spiral blade. So I have a brand new spiral blade installed, and the plan for this video is to cut a straight line and also a circle out of four different pieces of wood. I'm gonna start with pine, this is a piece of reclaimed wood from a piece of furniture. And you can see that there's, well, on this piece, there's four different smaller pieces that have all been glued together. So you can see how the grain varies from section to section. To section. Here's a piece of particle board. Looks like it's about five eighths of an inch thick. Here's a piece of MDF. Looks like it's about three eighths of an inch thick. And here's a piece of plywood. Looks like it's about a quarter of an inch thick. So here's a close-up view of that cut I just made. Looks pretty straight to me. Not perfect, but it looks pretty straight.
So here's the particle board. You can see it's not perfectly straight. And it did feel like the piece was wandering around a little bit, possibly because, you know, particle board is made up of these larger uh, chips of wood, I guess, is what you'd say. And they're all glued together. So as I was cutting through there, I, I felt the, uh, the board kind of wandering around. It felt a little bit harder to make a straight line. So here's the cut in the MDF. You can see that it's not all that straight. Here's the cut in the piece of quarter inch plywood. Not all that straight. Kind of went off the line a little bit over here. But it cut very easily. Now I'm going to repeat all of those straight cuts using now the pin and blade. All right, so there were a couple of differences that I hope you picked up on right away. First of all, I had to rotate the wood as I was pushing it through the blade to try and stay on the line. And that is because of the way uh, blades are made, blades like these are made. But you can see I got pretty close to the line once I got the hang of it. I had a few little detours over here was off a little bit, not horrible, but with a little bit more practice, I think I would be a lot more consistent. The other thing to notice is that the size of the kerf from the spiral blade is a lot larger than the kerf made by the pin end blade. The other thing, which is probably difficult to see on the camera, but as I was pushing the wood through that blade, I could feel it jumping as it went through different sections of, of the wood, whereas I didn't feel any jumping like that with the spiral side. So I think that that's also an interesting difference.
So I think that was a pretty good cut, reasonably straight, very thin kerf as I mentioned earlier compared to the spiral blade. So the question I have for you is, which cut is straighter? I'm going to say this cut is straighter, and that's made with the pin end blade. Reasonably straight, definitely not perfect. The spiral blade cut here seems a little bit more wiggly or jagged. The pin and blade cut not as jagged. Seems reasonably straight, and once again, very much a thinner kerf than the spiral blade. So I hope you can see that the circle is not very smooth. The cutout is a lot of bumps, little ridges, and valleys. What I felt as I pushed the wood through the blade is that as it went from going with the grain here to slightly across the grain to across the grain here, back to with the grain, the wood 
took a different amount of force to push it through the the blade and as an inexperienced scroller I felt the wood kind of jump as it moved from areas where it was easy to push the wood through compared to areas where it was a little bit harder so I think what I've learned here is that when cutting a piece of wood like this that has a very pronounced green cutting curves using a spiral blade is definitely a challenge cutting straight across the green didn't seem that difficult although it was a little bit more jagged than using the pin end blade I think this is a little bit better than the pine, but not a whole lot. Here's the pine, and here's the particle board. So I guess I have to conclude that the particle board was a little bit easier to move through the spiral blade when making a curved cut, cutting the circle. Well, I hope you saw that the MDF cut really easily. But once again, I got some ridges here. So by way of comparison, here's the pine, the MDF, and the particle board. All right, let me cut out the last one, the plywood. Same sort of thing, same result really, cutting the plywood. Here's the pine, the MDF, the particle board, and the plywood. If I had to pick one, I would say maybe the particle board is the one that's cut the smoothest. Although with a little practice, I think the plywood could be the one that's cut the smoothest. 
or the MDF. The MDF is very dusty when you cut it though. So here's the circle cut with the pin and blade and there are still some ridges so it's definitely not perfect. I don't know if you could hear it on the camera but there were certain sections of the workpiece where the blade seemed to just jump right through it. I think it was over in here. The blade just jumped right through some of these sections probably in between here and this piece of the wood this section seemed a little sappier a little wetter and there's also a knot right there so I think that affected how the blade went through the wood but overall I think it was reasonably easy to stay on the cut line using the pin and blade and actually I'll go so far as to say I think it was easier to stay on the cut line using the pin and blade versus the spiral blade so let's see here's the here's the spiral blade circle Spiral blade, pin and blade. So here's the particle board disc. You can see the cut is reasonably smooth there. I had a little point right there where I went off the cut line. But luckily I'm on that side of the cut line so I could sand this smooth to the cut line. And I think it would look pretty well, pretty good. Don't really have any real ridges here. So other than that one deviation from the cut line, I think I was pretty close. And I would say it was much easier to control, or said another way, it was much easier to cut the disc using the flat, uh, the pin, and blade this one versus the spiral blade which was cut with this one I don't know if you can really see if you can really tell spiral blade pin and blade
I would say this one is better than this one. So here's the MDF disc cut with the pin end blade. A few little ridges. But because MDF has no grain, I think it cuts very easily. Here's the disc that was cut with the spiral blade. Spiral blade, pin end blade. So I think this pretty clearly shows that I was not able to control the uh, wood going through the spiral blade as well as I was able to with the pin end blade. So here's the plywood disc I just cut, kind of veered off the cut line a little bit there and made kind of a little ridge as I tried to correct. But once again, because I'm on that side of the cut line, I could easily sand this away and make a pretty smooth transition. few more ridges here but overall not too bad compared to the spiral blade disc which has considerably more ridges now clearly it's not the blades problem or fault it's my fault. I wasn't able to ad adequately control the wood as I pushed it through the blade, and that's what accounts for these ridges and veering off the cut line and so on. So here are the discs that I've cut, and if you look at the edges, I'm wondering if you can tell which ones were cut with the spiral blade and which ones were cut using the pin end blade. Spiral blade, spiral blade, spiral blade, spiral blade. Well, I hope you found that video useful. I know I learned a few things while in the process of making it about spiral blades. First, it seems clear that the kerf that a spiral blade makes is significantly wider than the kerf that a traditional flat blade makes. And that only makes sense since the spiral blade is twisted. Secondly, the surface finish on parts cut using a spiral blade is likely to be a little bit rougher than the surface finish of parts cut from a flat blade. And once again, that also makes sense since the spiral blade is twisted. And then thirdly, 
uh, out of the eight discs that you saw me cut, the four that I cut using the spiral blade, I found it more difficult to stay on the cut line using the spiral blade. So maybe this is what the more experienced scrollers have been trying to tell me in their YouTube videos and also in their forum posts, but maybe not. I'm a new scroller. I don't have a lot of time scrolling to begin with and even less time scrolling with a spiral blade. So maybe with more time, practice, experience, um, I will be able to develop a, diff a better uh, sense of control. But for right now, going forward, I plan to stick with more traditional flat uh, scroll saw blades as I develop some experience and uh, hopefully make some good parts and some good projects. Now, the only question that remains is what blade profile should I be using? Bye.